It's really critical as a leader or as an organization that you do not have a fear of conflict. I mean, if you have a fear of conflict, eventually the conflict you're going to be faced with is bankruptcy. What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here, and in today's video, we're going to discuss one of my favorite management books, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Now this book by Patrick Laconi is absolutely amazing and really explores the different dynamics and dysfunctions that teams can have that really hold them back from working cohesively as a unit. So we're just going to kind of work through the five dysfunctions. This book is absolutely amazing though. If you haven't checked it out, you need to go download it on Audible or grab it on Amazon, wherever you get your books, the library, I don't care. But this book is an absolute masterpiece for anyone that's looking to really level up as a leader or a manager. And it's actually a quick read as well. I think it's maybe three, four hours on Audible. So there's really no excuses. But here's a quick summary so that hopefully you guys will actually dive into it. It's something I use with my team on a regular basis. The first dysfunction of a team is the absence of trust. So if you're not comfortable being vulnerable, if your team members aren't comfortable being vulnerable, if you're not open to discussions, well, you really can't function as a team whatsoever. Every team needs to have an at least a degree of trust so that you can work together. If you don't trust someone, you're never gonna work cohesively as a unit. So the first thing is you need to establish those bonds of trust and a lot of that comes down to, well, in my opinion, you need to really build relationships with these people, not just transactions. Now, how can you tell if there's an absence of trust on your team or in your business? The first thing is, are people willing to be vulnerable? Do they hold grudges? Do they try and hide their mistakes rather than be open and vulnerable and share a mistake they made? Are they really just like focused on distrusting each other, trying to nitpick and pull each other down? And is there constantly conflict in your organization? If that's the case, there's likely an absence of trust and you need to really work towards creating an environment where you can actually foster that trust with relationships through your team members. On the flip side, how can you tell if you've got an organization with a high degree of trust? Well, do people look forward to meetings? Are they willing to occasionally have conflict? Are they willing to take advice? And are they willing to, you know, when maybe there's a little bit of a critical feedback loop, are they willing to actually take those critiques and use them into productive means? If everyone's constantly dreading your meetings, if people are not willing to be vulnerable, if they're avoiding conflict, there's likely an absence of trust, and this is a big issue in your organization. And if, if you've got this problem, I mean, the rest of these problems, you've definitely got them in your organization as well. The second dysfunction of a team that you need to watch out for is a fear of conflict. So this can also be described as artificial harmony. Specifically, does every, is everyone just a yes man? At meetings, are they very boring and no one's willing to really create any conflict or play devil's advocate? A great way to maybe approach overcoming the fear of conflict is something called blue team, red team. So you guys can Google this and dive deeper into the concept, but the underlying principle here is you need to be willing to be in conflict occasionally with your team members to really get the best results. Because if there's an absence of trust, if there's a fear of conflict, if you've only got artificial harmony where no one's really bought in, well, no one's really going to do the work. On the flip side, if you don't have an organization with a fear of conflict, it'll become easier to make fast decisions. There's not going to be this sense of artificial harmony where everyone says yes and then uses back channels or company politics in order to get their way. They're going to be comfortable saying it at the boardroom table rather than coming into your office afterwards to talk behind other people's back. It's really critical as a leader or as an organization that you do not have a fear of conflict. I mean, if you have a fear of conflict, eventually the conflict you're going to be faced with is bankruptcy. The third dysfunction of a team is the lack of commitment. And this often comes from ambiguity. So specifically, when we're talking about lack of commitment, is everyone pointing the finger at each other? When it's time to really identify who's going to take ownership of a project, is everyone just sitting silently rather than raising their hand or taking ownership of that project? This is a really important aspect because in my opinion, if your employees aren't bought in or your team members aren't bought into the organization, they're never going to commit to actually doing the work and making sure. So is everyone always, you know, covering their ass? Are they constantly looking for an escape mechanism where it's like, well, I never was really bought into this. So that was really Jane's project or Joe's project rather than my fault. 
And if all day people are just pointing the fingers at each other, if they're not really willing to commit and take ownership over that project or an aspect of it, you're never gonna make any progress as a team. On the flip side, if your team is willing to make commitments, decision making is gonna be fast and easy. Hey YouTube, are you guys looking to buy a rental property? If the answer is yes, then you need to pay close attention to the following information. Nitty Gritty Real Estate is a company that's here to help you buy a rental property in your market in as little as 30 days. Investors typically learn real estate by watching YouTube videos, joining Facebook groups, all kinds of different things, reading books. However, I see tons of people spend a lot of time and money and yet never end up taking action because they still don't know how to actually get started. Does this sound familiar? The best way to learn something is by actually doing it. And so Nitty Gritty's experienced team will actually walk you through the entire process of how to buy a property, rehab it, get it up and operational, and they'll even provide you with contacts if you need to uh, set up the real estate business, so if you need lawyers, accountants, things like that. But go to nittygrittyrealestate.com for additional information, and you can click the link in the video description down below to hop over. But again, they're really just here to help facilitate and get you launched into your real estate investing career and they'll give you a free consultation with no obligation whatsoever. So again, link to everything that we talked about is in the video description down below. Jump over and talk to Nitty Gray Real Estate and why not get started today? On the flip side, if your team is willing to make commitments, decision making is gonna be fast and easy. There's gonna be no hesitation and people will be willing to get bought into an idea even if maybe it wasn't originally theirs. But again, if there's a fear of conflict, you're never going to get the buy-in necessary for commitment. So that's why this is built out as a triangle is because each one of these levels needs to come first before the other. So if there's an absence of trust, if people can't trust each other, they're never going to be comfortable with conflict because they're going to fear the backroom politics. And if there's a fear of conflict, people will never make commitment. Because in order to actually make a commitment to an idea that wasn't yours, you're gonna to have to first be willing to go through the conflict of questioning that decision, that concept, or that principle. So again, it's really important we understand that this isn't just an arbitrary list, that this is a pyramid, a foundation that you need to lay as a leader or a business owner. The fourth dysfunction of a team is the avoidance of accountability. And this really comes if there's a lack of commitment. So if you've got low standards, if there's no pressure to really perform, if people aren't fully bought in, you're gonna find this avoidance of accountability. And this is the kiss of death for a lot of organizations. If you can't hold your employees accountable, if there's no feedback loop, if they can't be forced to improve, you're gonna be forced to stagnate. And a business that's not growing will eventually find itself dying. Some signs that you'll see if you have an avoidance of accountability is death by a thousand cuts, where bureaucracy is always in the way of making any sorts of decisions or holding anyone accountable. As well, people are gonna be constantly just shifting the blame or avoiding the blame, missing deadlines, or setting fuzzy deadlines rather than clear and crisp expectations and deadlines. Hey guys, quick edit here. Uh, wrote this out kind of fast and I accidentally wrote the words accountability twice rather than inattention of results. So every time I say inattention of accountability, just pretend I'm saying inattention to results and really everything else still makes sense. Thanks guys. And the fifth dysfunction of a team is the inattention of accountability. Now this can also be viewed as status and ego. And this is really when individual team members are putting themselves first and their success first before that of the team or the organization. And this is completely unacceptable if you're looking to grow as a business. If there's an inattention to accountability, oftentimes what you're gonna see is people just focusing on themselves. They're just gonna do what gets them the best performance review. They're gonna do what's best for them rather than focusing on what's best for the team or the overall organization. And we really need to be able to get team members that are fully bought in. Now throughout the uh, five dysfunctions of a team, the book, they use a lot of very illustrative examples and build out a series of different avatars and walk you through a case study or scenario that lays it out in a very easy to identify manner. And one of the best ways to kind of think about this inattention of accountability is maybe when you've got a rock star team member, but they pull everyone else down. Because while they're, they're maybe a rainmaker salesperson, they're constantly disruptive, they're constantly impacting the culture negatively of the team because they're focused on their status and ego and always being the best, rather than making sure that the team cohesively as a group is the best.
All right, that's it for a quick summary of one of my favorite management books, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. I hope you guys got value from it, and if you did, make sure you dive into the full book because there's so much more value than what we can cover in a quick five or 10 minute video. But once I listen to this book and really understand the concepts behind it, it dramatically impacted the future of my business and the results we were generating. And probably one of the biggest things that I've implemented that's practical that you guys can take away today is the concept of a one day offsite event. And this is really where you can reset the culture and focus of your business. So if you find yourself with any or all of these five dysfunctions of a team, I mean, as business owners or leaders, at some point in time, you will find yourself in this position. If there's an absence of trust, if there's a fear of conflict, if there's a lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability or an inattention of accountability, then we need to focus on that as leaders and set things right. So oftentimes what I do and what they recommend in the book is literally booking an offsite. Sometimes we'll go rent an Airbnb, take the whole team there and really explore as a team what's going on, what's holding us back and get that clarity and vision and buy-in. So first you need to build the trust. If people aren't willing to be vulnerable, they're never gonna move forward beyond any of these other uh, dysfunctions of a team. If there's fear of conflict, if people aren't willing to tell you the truth, your organization is destined for death. And if there's a lack of commitment, if people aren't willing to make a commitment, if they're not bought in, they're not gonna do the work necessary. If there's an avoidance of accountability, if you can't hold your people accountable, if they're not holding themselves accountable, if they're just missing deadlines, well, that's eventually gonna catch up to you. And then finally, if it's all about status and ego and the me and I rather than the we and team, well, it's just a matter of time before that house of cards falls apart because you do not have a strong foundation for your business or organization. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed me breaking down the lessons I took away from the five dysfunctions of a team. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. If you're looking for other great business or real estate investing content, check out this playlist right here, or why not check out this playlist right here. And until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks, guys.